Is marriage between one man and one woman? All right, Jonathan, I just want to give a couple of quick wrap-up thoughts on the idea of polygamy in the Old Testament. Some of the, the, the key players, if you will, that were involved in that were Jacob, King David, and King Solomon. Now, King Solomon took it to a whole different level. And the interesting thing about all of them is either they cleaned up their act or they were drawn completely away from God because of it. And that's what the scriptures tell us. So it gives us a sense that, you know what, the polygamous relationships didn't end up to be like a great ideal because either they stopped or they were led into idolatry. What does that tell you? God tolerated and allowed it, but he didn't say, oh, this is the way to do it. All right. That's, I think, the key from the Old Testament. Now, let's go back to that article, that December 15th Newsweek article, The Religious Case for Gay Marriage, another paragraph. Newsweek. The Bible does condemn gay male sex in a handful of passages. Twice, Leviticus refers to sex between men as an abomination, King James Version. But these are throwaway lines, in particular text given over to codes for living in the ancient Jewish world a text that devotes verse after verse to treatments for leprosy, cleanliness, rituals for menstruating women, and the correct way to sacrifice a goat or a lamb or a turtle dove. Most of us no longer heed Leviticus on haircuts or blood sacrifices. Our modern understanding of the world has surpassed its prescriptions. Why would we regard its condemnation with more seriousness than we regard its advice, which is far lengthier on the best price to pay for a slave? Um, and Jonathan, I said that, you know, we would be calm. But when I read this line about, well, these are throwaway lines. These are lines that you just really can just throw away. And when you follow the reason, they say, well, because we don't care so much in this world now about leprosy and cleanliness rituals and the correct way to sacrifice a goat or a lamb and on and on. We don't care about those things. All of those are in Leviticus. So just put it all aside because they all don't mean anything to us. Hold the phone. Just stop a minute. Again, you can say that Leviticus contains those things, and you are 100% right. But do you understand how Leviticus is divided up? That's the question I would ask this author. Have you read the beginning of each chapter in Leviticus when it's giving all of these instructions? Each chapter is sort of a world unto its own, giving guidelines in certain areas. It just so happens that, first of all, Leviticus is about many regulations that God was implementing for his people. They're now becoming a nation, and they need to have guidelines. Some were ceremonial, and some were ritualistic. There's no question. The fact is, Leviticus chapter 18 is the only chapter in the entire book that begins with a comparison back to Egypt and forward to Canaan, and the command to not do the things that they may have seen or will see in those two places. It's the only chapter in the entire book that has a different beginning and says, you've seen behavior in the land that you left. Egypt. You're going to see behavior in the land that you're going to be conquering. Canaan. Don't do that behavior. And then God lists it out. So let's go through that chapter. Let's look at all of the things that are said here. And let me ask you, folks, if you say, okay, God's not condemning you know, homosexuality. Are all of the rest of these verses in Leviticus 18 throwaway lines as well? If you want to throw that one line away, you have to throw the rest of the chapter away. Leviticus 18, 1 through 5. Then the Lord God spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, I am the Lord your God. According to the doings of the land of Egypt where you dwelt, you shall not do. See, looking back, don't do what you saw. And according to the doings of the land of Canaan where I am bringing you, you shall not do nor shall you walk in their ordinances. Don't do what they do either. You shall observe my judgments and keep my ordinances to walk in them. I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man does, he shall live by them. I am the Lord. Almost every chapter in Leviticus starts with, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak these things to the people. Mm -hmm. But no other chapter in Leviticus gives this explanation about looking back at behaviors in Egypt and looking forward to behaviors in Canaan. None of them. This is different. Now let's look at the things that are here because these are behavioral things. These are not ceremonial things by any stretch of imagination. This is behavior. Let's look at Leviticus 18. We're going to go 6 through 23. We're going to kind of do it one verse at a time. 6. None of you shall approach anyone who is near of kin to him 
to uncover his nakedness. I am the Lord. Okay, approach unto has the thought of become sexually involved with. Okay, so he's saying you shouldn't become sexually involved with relatives. That's sort of a blanket statement. Next one. The nakedness of your father or the nakedness of your mother you shall not uncover. Okay, now that seems pretty obvious. Now, again, is that a throwaway verse? The nakedness of your father's wife you shall not uncover. It is your father's nakedness. So you shall not go in unto, have sex with, to be blunt, your father's wife. Now, it's interesting. The first verse talked about your father or your mother. This is your father's wife, supposing he remarried because your your mother had died. Mm-hmm. This is still saying just because she's not your blood relative this is your stepmother. It's saying you are not to be physically sexually involved with her. Is that a throwaway verse? Are we going to say, well, that doesn't matter anymore? Verse 9, the nakedness of your sister, the daughter of your father or the daughter of your mother, whether born at home or elsewhere, their nakedness you shall not uncover. So it's saying you shouldn't have sex with your sister. And, folks, I apologize for the bluntness of this, but the question is, are these throwaway verses? Are you going to say, oh, no, these don't matter. These are not things that we believe in. These are not things that we abide by anymore. 